Hi, I'm George Acorn with Fortitude, here today with Frank Van Meel, who's Head of Electrification for Audi AG. Audi today just introduced the Q5 Hybrid, Frank, and uh, Audi of America's social media team has some questions for you. Uh, I'll start with, uh, how far along is, is the Q5 Hybrid in development, and when can we expect to see it in the market? Well, uh, we've shown the car to the journalists by the end of last year on the Tech Day in Ingolstadt. Um, we showed it because we are really quite far. Uh, we're close to series production. That will be by the end of this summer, uh, early fall. Uh, what market do you expect hybrid uh, is geared for and where will it be most successful? Uh, well, first of all, it will be the markets uh, US and China, uh, the non-diesel markets as to speak. Um, that will be our main focus, but of course also Europe is now coming up towards hybrid technology. Could you compare the differences between diesel and hybrid? Where are the advantages for one over the other? Well, the diesel has got its biggest advantage uh, over the long haul. So if you're traveling long distance, uh, you get a very good mileage on the highway. So if you're really uh, using your car for longer distances, the diesel is unbeatable. If you use a car more for stop and go traffic, like uh, for instance for LA downtown, then a full hybrid uh, might be uh, your choice. What are the benefits of offering uh, both in the same market? And do you expect the hybrid models will affect the sales of TDI? Uh, well, as I, as I said uh, during my, my last answer, there is a, a difference in usage. So it really depends on how you're going to use your car. And depending on your typical daily vehicle usage, there is an advantage either for the diesel or for the hybrids, so they're not in each other's way. They just offer you a better choice. Do you find uh, certain markets like the United States may be more geared to one or the other? Well, of course, we, we can see on the world that Europe still is a, a very high, uh, highly emotional diesel market. What we also see is that the U.S. is coming up uh, strongly towards diesel. Um, of course, also regarding the long distances. No. But on the other hand, we also see uh, a, a big demand for, for hybrid vehicles for um, big city uh, traveling. This next question may be a bit along the lines of what we've asked before, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, first, how are you aligning your environmental message around the, the hybrid and the TDI technologies? And second, are you targeting different demographics with the two vehicles? Uh, well, first of all, the baseline is uh, we want to have the best improvement in C CO2 emissions we can get. And there is no silver bullet technology. So what we're aiming at right now is that we improve all different concepts that are available and that the customer wants. And those are, for instance, TFSI, TDI, uh, also hybrid vehicles. So we're improving on all of those concepts. What are the barriers for bringing electric vehicles like this or even full-on electric vehicles like the e-tron to market in, let's say, larger numbers? Um, well, from the customer standpoint, of course, the uh, total cost of ownership is one of the main issues. One of the reasons for the popularity of hybrids, apart from being uh, good towards uh, social responsibility, was also the fact um, that, that there is there were some, some incentives for driving hybrids like the use of carpool lanes even though we, if you're alone in the car that was worth some kind of value regarding total cost of ownership for the customers. With the electric vehicles this will be even much more important because for electric vehicles they will be more expensive than conventional ones, clearly more expensive. So for the customer the question is what makes it interesting for me to have a car like that of course the usage of carpool lanes is interesting, of course. Uh, the possible usage of special parking places with, um, let's say, um, charging possibilities for free in shopping malls. There are a lot of issues that might attract a customer to electric vehicle, but still, it's going to be much more expensive. And it's got, it will have, if it's a purely electrical one, a limited range. So again, there are a lot of things that have to be regarded and not all of them are already clear. In the next five years, what percentage of the market, or perhaps your sales, do you foresee being electric or hybrid vehicles? Well, that, that again is a question that is very often asked, that I'm very often asked, but uh, the question, the, the answer, I, I, unfortunately, I cannot give you because it's a social, social political issue. It depends on legislation. Um, it also depends on incentives, and it depends on where on the world that's going to happen. And again, we're looking at Europe. U.S. market, China, Japan, uh, and they're all driving their own ways. 
What is clear is that electromobility will come. What we cannot answer right now is how fast, where, and when exactly. Speaking of electric uh, mobility coming, when do you think we might see the R8 e-tron or perhaps the A1 e-tron for we, sale? Yeah, we will bring the R8 e-tron in a very small series uh, onto the roads by the end of 2012. And with the A1 e-tron, we will start a fleet test in Munich uh, by the middle of this year with 20 cars uh, to find out what the typical mobility behavior is. Uh, for that car, we also added a range extender, so it's a battery electric car with the with a charging unit on board to recharge the battery if necessary. And what we try to find out is how does a customer typically move over the day, not only with his car, but also by bicycle, by foot, subway, whatever. And if that changes, if he moves to an electric car, and if that again changes, if you offer him a range extender. So we're still trying to figure out if that what we're currently working on is what the customer really wants, and we're really anxious to see what they say. Does Audi plan to expand its e-tron offerings beyond the R8 and the A1? Well, of course, we already have shown more cars than only those two on the uh, different motor shows all over the world in the past one and a half years. And of course, we are working on, on other cars and other concepts as well. Uh, for just one example, we've shown the, um, the so-called uh, E-Quattro concept in Paris. It was a sports car, a Spider, with a diesel engine at the rear and an electrical front wheel uh, possibility, um, which is one of the issues we're also working on, just one of them. Uh, I don't want to say too much about all the other things we're working on, uh, because we keep that to ourselves until we think it's ready to to go to public with them. It sounds like a big project. It is.